All right, let's compute some Taylor expansions. What kinds of functions can we work with? Well, in theory, all we need to know is how to compute derivatives. So let's go. Let's compute a whole bunch of derivatives. Taylor expand the function f of x equals 1 over x times sine of x squared. Now, let's ignore the problems that we might have evaluating this at zero. I don't know. What, was that L'Hopital's rule? What, what do you do for that? I don't know. But let's just compute some derivatives. Use the definition of Taylor expansion. The sum, k goes from zero to infinity, one over k factorial, kth derivative of f evaluated at zero times x to the k. So what's our function? One over x sine of x squared. What's the derivative of this? Ooh, this is going to be some work. This is going to use what? The product rule, the chain rule. Oh, I got to remember how to do this. Let's see. The derivative is the derivative of 1 over x. That's minus 1 over x squared times sine of x squared plus 1 over x times the derivative of sine of x squared. That's 2x times cosine of x squared. Oh, and now we got to worry about what happens when you evaluate this at zero. And now I got zeros in the denominator. This is going to take some work. Now, trust me, this evaluates to negative one plus two, that equals plus one. But we're just getting started. That's just one derivative. Now we have to do the second derivative. And oh no. This is going to get a lot more complicated. And guess what? The second derivative is 0. The third derivative is 0. The fourth derivative is 0. It's not till the fifth derivative that things start getting interesting in this particular example. Ah, this is kind of disappointing. I thought that we could handle any kind of function, but this seems impractical for complicated functions where it's hard to compute lots of derivatives. But there's good news. The big idea is that you can use substitution to compute complicated Taylor series from simple ones. This works. Why? This works because we know what composition does with derivatives. That's the chain rule. So let's go back to this example and let's think in terms of substitution. What do we got? We got 1 over x sine of x squared. Now, let's substitute x squared into the classical series for sine that we already know. So what is this? Well, I've got that 1 over x out in front, but then I'm going to take the series for sine and substitute in x squared. So sine of x squared is x squared minus quantity x squared cubed over 3 factorial plus quantity x squared to the fifth over 5 factorial minus quantity x squared to the seventh over 7 factorial. Keep going, keep going. Let's look at what happens. This simplifies really nice. That 1 over x out in front, oh, that cancels all the way down the line. We are left with the first term being x squared divided by x. That's just x. The next term is what? Well, I've got x to the sixth, but divide by x, that's x to the fifth over 3 factorial. The next term, x to the ninth over 5 factorial, then minus x to the 13th over 7 factorial. Keep going, keep going. This is so nice. Now, you can see the pattern that's going on here, but do you want all the terms at once with summation notation? Sure you do. So let's take our function, 1 over x, sine of x squared. And then for sine of x squared, we're going to write that out using summation notation. The sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, then quantity x squared raised to the power 2k plus 1 divided by quantity 2k plus 1 factorial. How do I simplify this? Well, those powers work out really nicely x squared raised to the 2k plus 1 is really 4k plus 2. Divide by x, that removes 1 from the exponent. And we are left with the sum. k goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, x to the 4k plus 1, divided by quantity 2k plus 1 factorial. 
That's it. That's the entire thing. That was easy. And it's beautiful and it saved us so much work. Substitution is such a wonderful and useful technique.